hunt or be hunted. Welcome back everyone. Today we are traveling back to France once again to make a traditional dish called poulet chasseur, hunter chicken. You may have it already. This delicious stew that requires only one pot, only requires some delicious white wine, wild mushrooms, caramelized onions, and some tarragon for a kick of flavors. Two things remain to be done, for us to get cooking and for you to subscribe. Let's go. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is to dry our chicken. Super important because A, you wanna make sure the skin is crispy and get the max flavor, and also you don't want to splatter in your face. It could be dangerous. Once you've done that, you're gonna separate the thigh from its leg. You could cook the whole thing, but I don't know, I kind of like to do that so you have more morsels, first of all, and you really get max flavors. Once we've done that, we'll repeat the process with them all, and we move on to the next steps which is going to sear the meat. And we're gonna start with a heavy bottom pan with oil that is really hot. You really wanna get all these flavors in that skin crispy. So we're gonna place all our pieces that I've obviously seasoned uh, before with some salt. And then when you get that golden brown color, we're gonna flip them over. Then when you have the color on both sides, we're gonna take them out of the pot, put them on the resting rack, and we're gonna let them rest. Um, and we also wanna make sure that we keep that chicken fat for later. While the chicken is resting, we're gonna start working on the garnish, starting with the onions, the large onion. So we're gonna start to take the onion, peel it, and we're gonna dice it into a brunoise. Doesn't have to be super, super, super precise, like sometimes I'm telling you to, because it's going to cook for quite a long time, but just make sure it's regular. Size doesn't matter so much, but regular is very important. We'll then put that aside and move on to the little onions, the pearl onions. Same idea as the bigger onion, we're gonna cut the top and the bottom and we're gonna peel them. It's actually easier if we put them in hot water, just a little tip. Then we're gonna move on to the garlic. Same thing, we're gonna cut the top and bottom and we're gonna crush them. It's going to split the skin open. And from here, all we're gonna do is just to peel it off. You're gonna see the clove is gonna come right out. It's super easy to peel and it's also crushed. You're gonna get all the flavors. You don't need to dice it at all. We're gonna put the whole thing in just like that. Next, we're going to move on with the mushroom, starting with the portobello, which I don't know what I'm throwing in the air. I literally have no juggle skills. I will just trim the top a little and then we're gonna just cut it into smaller pieces. I don't like to do too thin, I like some texture, especially because it's going to cook for a while. Once we're done with the portobello, we're gonna move on to the oyster. This one, you don't need to cut it really. All you gotta do is to tear it apart and you will see it will just break naturally. Once we're done with the oyster, we'll put them aside and finally we'll work on the button mushroom or cremini up to your choice. It's cute, it's like a little baby. And I'm gonna try to, you know, kind of uh, show you that I can juggle, but realistically, I still cannot. So we are going to focus on the cooking. We're gonna, again, trim the foot of the mushrooms and we're gonna quarter them. Again, smaller mushrooms, we don't need to cut them too, too thin, otherwise it will just disappear in the stew. Look at these beautiful wild mushrooms. Next, we're gonna work on the tomato. And you can see this tomato is not the prettiest, but you know what, it's a stew, and you don't have to have the nicest vegetables, okay? So do not waste, do not throw things away because they don't look super good, right? We're gonna take the core of the tomato out, and then we're gonna just cut them into nice dices, and then you can keep the heart for tomato sauce or stock. There's plenty of ways to use the entire tomato and actually most of the flavor are in the heart. This is what the pulp is. Now that we are finished with all our garnishes, we're gonna go back and start cooking them in the pot. So using the same pot, like you see, we have all the flavors. And then I'm going to add the mushroom. Then we're gonna season it with salt and pepper. And as you can tell, I'm not touching them. I want them to brown first. Then I will add some butter, which is going to nourish the mushroom and really get that nuttiness from the butter and the mushrooms, that earthy flavors. Then at this point, I will add the diced onions and we're gonna sweat that off for about two to three minutes. It's gonna start to get that sweet flavor from the onions. Then we'll add our pearl onion as well as our garlic and we're gonna start to get a bit of color. Once we gain that beautiful caramelized color from everything, we're gonna add some flour to terrify it. So it's gonna start cooking. So we remove the taste of the flour which help thicken our sauce later. And then we're going to deglaze with some white wine. 
We are then going to reduce that white wine and it's going to thicken really fast. So that's the point where I'm going to add my chicken stock that I double fortified, okay? It's a white chicken stock from boiled bones, not roasted. You could actually use roasted, it will just get a darker sauce. That's the difference. I'm gonna give that a stir and we're going to place our chicken back into the pot, okay? Make sure it's covering almost to the skin. We'll then add our dice of tomato and we're gonna cover it and cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. Meanwhile, we're gonna start working on a garnish with this beautiful fragrant tarragon, which is one of my favorite herbs. It's just so powerful. It's beautiful, going super well with the chicken chasseur. I'm going to pick it and then we're gonna roll it over itself like a chiffonade and we're gonna cut it. It doesn't have to be too, too small because at the end of the day it's just two and it doesn't have to be pretty. It will be lost in the sauce. It's only the flavors we're focusing on. 40 minutes later. Our chicken has been simmering away for a while and it's now ready to be finished. So the fragrance I'm getting are just incredible. I will then add our chopped tarragon. We're gonna give that a stir and it's about ready to be plated. So you could put as little as much uh, chicken as you want per person and you can accompany it with some rice, or some potatoes, some pasta. Really, you can go to town on the garnish. Wow, check this out. And here we have it, a delicious dish, perfect for fall or winter. The chicken chasseur can be accompanied with some rice, white rice, with some noodles, like nice tagliatelle. It will go perfect. All these flavors with the tarragon, so fragrant. If you enjoyed this recipe, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. As always, you know what's gonna happen next. I need to try this, so I will see you soon. You gotta try this.